Welcome to up next our regular Rovers round table looking ahead to another huge date here at the Millennium Stadium on Sunday when witness are the visitors and we're hoping to get a huge number of fans down for that and reflecting as well on a uh, victorious Monday night at Bradford in the company of Adam Cuthbertson and also Jesse Senelefeo and Junior Moores and we'll start with you two given that Adam didn't bother playing on Monday night how did how did you two find that victory uh, on Monday Junior? Um, yeah, no, I felt it was a tough game. Um, we did expect it to be a tough game. Um, I think we sort of struggled with the size of the pitch at, at the start. Um, but once we got the grips of the game, we, um, we finished off really well. And how was it for you to be back playing and getting some minutes again, Jess? Yeah, that's it. I think it was just, um, you know, I was just so grateful to get on the field again for the, the Rovers and, um, you know, just to get some minutes under my belt and gain a bit of confidence um you know i'm pretty far from where i want to be but um yeah just happy to put the jersey on eh, and um, represent and it's a measure adam of the depth of this squad that we we kind of see brian mcdermott who we had on the first episode of, uh, of this being able to pick quite a different side every week and and still win games and, and beat teams like bradford yeah i mean we've had a, a number of different changes over, over well ever since we started the season really we've had a few players shift around different roles we've had a few injuries and we've had some players come into the squad. Um, so it's really pleasing to see um, that we can still get up and put in a good performance and get, get a win, uh, regardless of those changes being made throughout the week. And you've got, uh, you got the coach there, the sack as well. Albeit John Keir, left by mutual consent. You boys turned up, did the job, and the coach is out of a job straight away. Oh man, I just have respect for that fella. He's won a Challenge Cup and I haven't done that. So if, uh, you, you, that doesn't really um, say much about who he is and what he does, because he is a successful coach. So yeah, that's all I know. You can see Brian McDermott skulking about in the background, so we, uh, we better be careful what we say here. <laughs> All right, Brian. <laughs> Just getting his pillows out, I think. <laughs> Have a sleep. Uh, what's it been like, guys, playing playing for this guy junior first of all Brian's come in and he's, he's getting results out of you all and you're, you're giving it back to him I think in your performances right um, yeah no I think it was a bit of an adjustment at the start uh, I think it's um, a lot of things that he he does with his game um, it's a bit foreign to a lot of people so for us to all buy into it it took a bit of time but it's starting to really gel now so um, yeah it's going good don't know what you're stifling a laugh at Jesse but what, what do you think of your coach and how are you enjoying that relationship? Oh, it's been awesome. Um, obviously, it's a, it's a fresh start for myself. I've been under the same coach for, for the five years that I've been here. But um, to see a, a different, um, you know, see, see a different game plan, strategy, um, you know, I feel like I'm coming to school every day, learning something new, and you know, I have to write it down because it's so new to us. But um, I'm really enjoying the, the challenge, and I'm learning every day, which I love, and um, that can only make us better. So what are the things you've been learning? What have you written down so far? I'm intrigued to know. I want to learn as well. Oh, man, I can't say everything. But um, just um, I think the mindset of everyone buying into to something, believing in the same thing. Um, I think unity has been massive over the, the preseason. And um, I think just, just as a leader, you know, stepping up and um, showing your leadership qualities um, as such a crucial time of this club and get them to where they want to be mm. he's big on leadership he's he's big on on discipline he's a big on a lot of things brian mcdermott we, we spoke a lot about this on the first episode of, of up next with with brian and, and with martin vickers and with, with mark carella as for you a guy who thought his rugby league days might have been done what what, what was it that made you think hang on a minute I've, I've still got something left in me i want to come here i want to be part of this featherston project i want to work with brian mcdermott um, well, obviously, I've had a uh, had the pleasure of working with Brian for about four years at Leeds. Um, yeah, I was sort of at a crossroads at the back end of uh, last year at York, and not really sure whether to hang him up or, or or to sort of choose a different career path. And at the time, I was I was in commercials at York and also playing. Um, when I found out, well, Brian gave me a call uh, not too long after he um, that he took the job up and. Um, when he approached me about coaching, which he knows I'm, I'm passionate about, but then the opportunity to, uh, to potentially finish off my career in, I suppose, the right manner, because I, I suffered a couple of injuries last year that probably helped me back from getting back to where I would have liked to be to finish my career. Um, so when that opportunity came up, I just thought it was a brilliant chance for me, not only to learn under the, the best coach um, that's, ever, that's ever coached the game over here in, in the Super League, but, um, but to finish my career off and 
in the best way possible here at this club and I'm just so grateful for the opportunity, not just from Ryan, but the club, um, because you know they had to back me as well, um, like Mark and, and Martin, to, to bring me over and take a chance on me, especially after suffering a few injuries um, back in the Leeds and then a couple uh, with, with my time at York, um, to take a chance and um, and uh, and I just yeah, it's been great ever since. And it's a bit like home, to be fair. I feel like I've walked into a place that's very similar to my time at Manly when I grew up. Um, just a just a a love for the sport, passion for rugby league, uh, everyone in the area, and I've and I've just that that to me has inspired me to kick on and and really want to yeah have a successful year both in the coaching department as a player. Uh, do you guys feel like that as well, Junior? When when Cuthpo talks about Featherstone feeling like home, do you get a sense of this being a place you in, you look forward to turning up every day and you're fully com- committed to, to to what what everyone here at the club wants to happen this year? Yeah, it does. It um, does help as well. There's a lot of guys here that have come from Australia, so um, everyone's sort of sort of in the same boat. Um, well, we've got a great like bunch of guys that are coming from work every every day, and you know, um, and what they have to do to get get from there and come to training, and you know, it's just something that we're all working and striving for to see if we can get up to Super League. So, so what is it? What is it, that drive when you wake up in the morning or when the guys come in from work? What is that thing that, that is making you get in the car and think, yeah, I, wanna, I need to get there. I want, I, you know, I want to be part of that. What, what is it, that, that one thing that's, that's getting you here every day? I think for me, I, I don't know whether this will be my last. I think every year now, I, I just take um, a year at a time. So um, if it is to be my last year, it would be, it'd be lovely to finish off on you know, contributing to this club, making it up to Super League, which will be a first. So um, yeah, that's, that's the way I look at it. And when we talk, Jesse, about, I mean, the experience of Australia that, I mean, taking myself out of this, we all have here, you know, you, you could look around this room and, and kind of think, you know, why are you guys here? You, you, the experiences you've had, the clubs you've played for, what is it that has, has drawn these players of such pedigree to come here to Featherstone and be part of this? I'll try and answer the first question is why are we here? You know, um, that's, so, that's what's so beautiful about our game. It's played in Australia, New Zealand, and the UK. And um, I've always wanted to come here. You know, my uncle played for Wakefield and um, then went to Catalan. So them flying in and out of New Zealand, I used to think, but I want to go on a plane as well. And they'll say, where are you going? They're going to the UK and Australia. So for me, it was like, uh, I never thought it would happen. But when it, when it happened, it was like a dream come true, you know, playing professional rugby on the other side of the world. And um, I'm providing for my family. But um, to answer the question about Featherston, um, before I even signed, I, I looked into the history about Featherston and what makes it so um, unique. You know, why is this area so, what was the word, um, proud? Um, that people are so proud and they don't like to change things. If you're Fev, you're Fev to, to the day you die. And um, they're, they're named in the doomsday book, you know, because they stood their ground. And, um, you know, there was a man that died for Featherston, you know, during that time. And, if you look at the crowd that comes out, there's a lot of old school guys and older, a lot of old people. And I've asked them, why do you come to every game? And it's a generational thing. Their granddad, their dad used to come. Used to work in the mines, come straight out of the mines, come here. They kick off at 3 o'clock on Sunday because the mines finished at 2.30. You know what I mean? And then they could walk from the mines straight to watch the, the rugby or play. And um, till this day, you'll see that. You know, guys working all day digging holes, come do gym, and then come out in the field and compete with us. And they still have the vision to play Super League or, or just um, be, make their people proud. So for me, that, that's just massive. And when I heard about the story about the grandstand, bringing it from Scarborough, and they did it all for free. It's just Featherston people. The grounds, Pete, these, these guys volunteer to come and do the ground. They do our game day. They put our jerseys on hangers, and that's for free. And like, see, that community, you can't buy that. So as if I wouldn't want to be a part of that. That's a real goosebumps answer, right? I don't mean, he, I'm, he's going to have me putting a shirt on yeah, in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Why would you not want to go and play to hear stuff like that? Yeah, and it's, I mean, I suppose it's that passion that uh, makes this, you know, it gives this team a, a, an edge. We, uh, you know, there's a real bind amongst the lads. Everyone's quite close. Everyone loves a band with each other and a beer uh, after the game with each other. And you don't get that at every club. I've been in a number of clubs now. Um, and admittedly, you don't get that at every club. So it's... Um, it's a beautiful thing to see um, week in and week out when we, uh, 
you know, when we go out there and put our bodies on the line and then can turn around and have that sort of mateship and camaraderie after, after the games and in around training sessions. Do you get that feeling when you're, when you're playing out here down the hill, up the hill at Post Office Road, Junior, the kind of thing that you were listening to, to Jesse so eloquently outlining there? Yeah, absolutely. You can see, you hear the passion in, in their voices when they're out and um, they fill out the stadium. Uh, no better feeling when there's a, when there's a packed crowd. And um, really gets us home in those tough, in those tough, tough games. Is that what drives you, like, you know, outlining what you have and every individual in that crowd with their reason for coming and their history for coming? It's wanting to give Super League to these people, to, to treat them to, to what you're all communally trying to drive towards this year. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, I think it's not just the fans, it's the people in the organisation. There's a lot of people that work for this club just for free and they just want us to achieve that goal. And um, yeah, so that, you know, that's a bit of a drive why, you know, I want to play well for the club, but also I have my own personal drives that, you know, like my family, I've got sons now that look up to me and they're getting older and they're, they're starting to play the game and I like to teach them the, the respect for the game and respect for not taking the piss, if, if that's another word to say, yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of things that drive me to be the best that I can be, but um, I just want to give back to the people now and. If we can get this job done, that, 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 that'll be it. Yeah, that'll be the one, and then the vision grows from there. Uh, we'll talk about the, uh, the, the next game up next is Witness, how big that is going to be, and uh, the desire to get a big crowd, and we'll talk about that, that guys, in a couple of minutes. Just, Adam, in terms of the, the season so far and what you want to achieve, how do you, how do you assess where, where Rovers are at? Yeah, ad admittedly, I'd, I'd say we're still building. We're still growing towards, um, towards the... The bigger picture, which is obviously making it in the finals and, and achieving success to go in the Super League. Uh, I don't think you can do that from, you know, blowing teams off the park week in and week out. I think you have to you have to learn and grow and um, find a bit of character amongst the team and, and obviously make the changes that we're making um, uh, week in, week out. You know, trying to find um, that, that buy-in and that, that true squad buy-in that you know, so we rotate in order to to look at what the best fit is and what the best combinations are. And admittedly, we're we're still we're still um, I wouldn't say we're in search. I think we're in a really good spot, really good spot. Spot. We're just now vaulting on and and making sure that we go from strength to strength and we never get complacent. Um, you know, um, as the weeks go on, we've got a got a lot of big tests to get. Um, Coming up, we've got a, a, a really strong on their day uh, witness team, and then we've obviously got a, a big semi final up, uh, up uh, against Borough uh, for the 1895 Cup, which is, you know, a huge test in its own right and something that's quite special to be a part of. Um, I know the boys went and won it last year at Wembley. I was on, I was on the opposition that that week, and yeah. and and I was gutted. I'll be honest, I was gutted. Um, pe some people write the, the the trophy off, but any trophy's uh, worth playing for, and and and. One that you, it's so special going to Wembley. You know, I've been I've been fortunate to go to Wembley a number of times and playing Challenge Cup and live for Challenge Cup, Cup, Cup trophies. Um, that particular week felt very similar for myself. You know the build up for that, um, the honour of playing at Wembley um, with the, with the, your crowd travelling and supporting you. I remember I remember the Fed crowd very well. They were very loud and very supportive, and they all stuck there together in their uh, in their corner and. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was awesome to see. Um, and and those, those sort of moments are what, what you play the sport for. Um, so we've got to, I'm sort of, I've sort of veered off because I'm thinking as a coach, I'm thinking as a player. Um, but, yeah, we've got, we've got a lot ahead of us. And I suppose the short answer is um, we're still building. We're still building. Um, and it's great to see both as a player and, you know, um, sat in, with the coaches in the coach's office because it's exciting times for the club. Um, and hopefully for these lads too. Uh, do you feel, guys, you can both, you can both answer this one, that, that Rovers are the team that, that everyone is trying to beat at the moment? You know, you have those teams in the league. Everyone's talking about Rovers. Top of the pile, favourites to go up, bringing in all these big name, big money signings all the time. You guys are the team that everyone want, everyone's desperate to beat. Do you get that sense, be, being part of this team? Regardless of anything else, I think if you're coming first, everyone wants to knock you off anyway, so... Um, but yeah, I think that's the tag that we have, but that's just comes with the territory. Um, Doesn't bother you, I can tell. No, nah, no. Nah. At the end of the day, we go out and try and win a game of footy every week. Um, so for us, it's just another game every week. 
Yeah, yeah. And I, I, reckon, I reckon you kind of thrive on that, don't you? Yeah, I just... We've got to prepare really well. Um, a lot of it has just got to do with us. So if we can concentrate on us and making sure we're playing at like 9 out of 10s, I think the result will take care of itself. Uh, should we talk about Widness? That's up next here on Sunday. I mean, are you, are you going to bother playing this one or are you, are you still out? <laughs> oh, I get asked this question a, a bit when I get to training. They ask me if I've got my coach's jacket on or I'm, uh, yeah. or I'm playing because uh, I'm training because I, uh, apparently I come across quite selective in that area. But um, <laughs> No, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, to be honest. I've got to go for a fitness test first and foremost before I can consider playing. Um, when, not, when are we doing that? Are we doing that tonight? Or? <laughs> yeah. Do you want me yeah, to have a look? Have you, a can bit tell, of a... you can tell he's a coach who's got pants on. <laughs> <laughs> if he's got shorts on, he's going to run. I've got, my, I've got my beanie in my pocket again. Um, no, no, it's, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll probably have a, a bit of a trot later this week and just see how... My leg's holding up. I get, got a bit of an injury against Sheffield, so um, yeah, I'm 37 now, so I got to take got to take care of the body. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll, well, I'll have a trot this week and see how I go. But I don't know. Look, the boys are playing brilliant, um, and you know, I wouldn't. I, wouldn't, I don't think uh, it'd be deserved of just walking straight back into a team that's playing so well anyway. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what the uh, squad's looking like this weekend. Obviously, get the fitness test and see where we go from there. It's Widness, a, a huge name like Featherstone. You talk about the history, Jess, of Featherstone early on. Widness have got a huge history in this game. No matter what is going on at, at that club, and they're having a, a difficult season, they're looking for a new coach. They're going to be here on Sunday, and it'll have the feel about a big game, won't it, for you? Yeah, 100%. Just a message to everyone out there in Featherstone. Get down here. Make sure you come to support us. Um, it's going to be a big day. There's always things happening around the ground. Um, we're going to get the best team out there, so yeah, I think we're going to put on a solid performance. Um, you know, if we follow Cuffo's game plan. <laughs> Did you put it together yet? No, no. I'm still just debriefing about the uh, the Bradford fixture. Nah, but come out, man. We, you know, I think um, it's an experience uh, experience in itself. So um, it's going to be a good day. It's always a good day down here on Sunday, anyway. So yeah, can't wait. Yeah, in all seriousness, how much of a lift? does it give you to have a, a huge and vocal crowd here? The crowds have been, been good this year, you know, upwards of 3,000. I know we're looking to get that, you know, up, upwards of four, perhaps even five, given the success you guys are having on, on the field. Yeah. From a player's point of view, when you're out there in the heat of battle, can you give me a sense of, of how much that adds to you to, to have that, you know, full backing from this famous old ground behind you, Junior? Yeah, no, it's massive. Um, you know, us playing in the middle, um, there's times where we're finding it really tough. Um, and, you, you know, you get that extra lift um, when you're really finding it tough. And um, just be able to get into those extra tackles and those extra runs. So, But, it, yeah, it's, it's awesome. When it's a full house and they're all yelling us down, it's no better feeling. Does it still give you that extra bounce as a player when you're driving in, perhaps carrying a bit, a few aches and pains when you can, when you can hear the, the fans behind you? Does it give you that edge? Yeah, well, look, I haven't played at home since uh, since the trials. I can't so, <laughs> so, like the last home game that I seen, um, there was a corner where all the boys took their shirts off and they were going crazy. So, man, just to witness that, you know, that's we'll, December. <laughs> no, it was against. Um, what was that last game? Barrow. Yeah. Barrow, yeah. It was, it was crazy, man. It was good, and um, you know, obviously these guys were playing. <laughs> it, it adds a lot, doesn't it? You know, you've. You've come from a, a yeah. dynasty at, at Leeds where that south stand was probably yeah. you know, worth a couple of points at least a match to you. Oh, it's everything. The, the crowd turning up is everything. Um, honestly, I, I can honestly say I've, I've been in a lot of matches where I get, we get home because of the crowd, because of the home crowd. Um, and just going, for, you know, we've, we've been for a bit over the last couple of years. We've played with no crowds for a period of time. And I think that very quickly reminded everyone how important it is, um, you know, not just not just um, for ticket sales, just just to have that atmosphere um, and create that, you know, that that sense of excitement around the ground and even amongst us, you know. And I know I can say for a fact, you know, um, we go out there and when we hear that roar of the crowd, we don't want to let our a home crowd down, you know. We we'll give everything we've got um, to make sure we get up for for the, for the turnout. Um, so yeah, it means everything to us, and something I truly won't ever take for granted again. 
um, is playing in front of my home crowd um, because you know we've all been through that that era where there was none non-existent crowds and, and it just wasn't fun. And how much of a drive is it, guys, to to go through the season unbeaten? Uh, certainly at home here in front of the the fans that are so so passionate and so loyal to to turn up every week and produce the goods and and try and make sure junior that no of these opposition teams gets anywhere near you um i don't i think that's the the real goal i think the goal is the one at the end of the year uh, the most important one as um for us building to that game so you know obviously it's, it'll be nice to to win every game but like we're keeping it in the forefront of our mind that the game at the end of the year is the one that we want um, is that so, it just focus on the big goal yeah man that's what happened to us at the other club yeah. <laughs> we won every game at home and then we lost yeah the did, did the it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did I remember that <laughs> good day yeah good just two important games bro tick them off <laughs> but they but they you know the other club being Cass of course and, and Le Le Leeds having the knack but that's something that Feather are going to have to develop because it isn't about is it as you will know Adam it's not just about dominating all season because it will then come down to one match and if you don't do the same then then none of this matters right yeah and i think that's that's the beauty of having mac as a coach he's a vet, he knows he's a, he's a professional at that he understands it's more than it's more than it's more than just you know talk about game plan it's more than just game plan you got to, you put a structure in you put a philosophy and mindset in place um you know you can be the most skillful team in the world if you can't handle the pressure of turning up for a final what's the point um so I think that's that's you know the beauty of having someone like Mac at the club and and what's going on by the oh, way they're just they're enjoying oh, each other's company they're loving it. Oh, <laughs> oh, well, I can go, I can go then can't I? <laughs> uh, it sounds like we should probably wrap up soon. Um, in fact, we'll wrap up now. But I'll give the, the final thought probably to you because you've been so beautifully eloquent uh, throughout the course of this recording. Um, just a word to anyone thinking what shall I do on Sunday oh yeah man if you're free this Sunday uh, make sure you get down to Featherstone Rovers home ground we've got the witness Vikings and um, you've got big panda in form so come and watch him um, and I'm pretty sure there'll be some entertainment let's go <laughs> and if you want a beverage after the game <laughs> uh, we don't need to be flogging your beers just yet uh, it's been great seeing you all. Every locale, though, this weekend, uh, every pint of locale you buy this weekend uh, at home ground, you'll get a ticket and go in um, the running to win a 2022 signed jersey. So get down, enjoy the day, buy a pint of locale, enjoy yourself. <laughs> Anything you want to flog, Junior, while we're on? Uh, no, they've done it all. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, guys, thank you for your company. Thanks for allowing me back into the gym. Great to see you, Junior. No uh, really appreciate coming. Jesse, always a pleasure. Thanks, uh, mate. And likewise, Adam Cuthbertson. Uh, we'll be back uh, next month for Up Next. Thanks for your company. We'll see you then.